<laughs> Welcome to Vigo Church. This morning under preach, we wanted to address a few things that maybe you feel comfortable with, but I don't. You know, kind of like Sunday morning, you know, I, I kind of don't really get this whole excited idea about what Sunday morning is about because most of the time when I grew up as part of the Jesus movement, I would go to a Sunday morning service and work behind the scenes to present the message or the gospel or do the work of the ministry so that people that were not saved would come on a Sunday morning and get saved. You see, I kind of looked at Sunday morning as being for the ungodly to learn how to be godly. And I kind of still look at it that way because most of the time when I see people go to a Sunday morning service, I really don't see Christianity in action. I see a lot of, well, you know, if I wanted to be honest with you, a lot of actors on stage. You know, the worship leader does his part and the pastor does his part and the preacher does his part and the greeter does their part and everybody kind of works together. It's not kind of like a free-flowing move of the Spirit of God, in my opinion. Now, does free-flowing move of the Spirit of God happen inside of a structured box called worship? Well, yeah, you know, in a lot of churches, that's true. And does the free-flowing move of the Spirit of God work inside the box of our teaching? Well, yeah, you know, it kind of works that way. And does, you know, the free-flowing move of the Spirit of God work inside of our box of Sunday morning? Well, yeah, kind of, you know, sort of. But what would it have been like to be with Jesus on a Sunday morning? <laughs> I don't think it would have been like what you see today. The reason I say that is because in the preach part, we like to talk about things that maybe we can reach out and say, this is what Jesus did. Why don't we do the same? In other words, I can understand traditions of men, and it's nice that they have a box to put them in, you know, a box called traditions. And Sunday morning, there's a tradition that you kind of, you know what you're going to get. That's why you can go to Sunday morning. you got to get dressed up, cleaned up, fixed up, look up, you know, and get, quite frankly, presentable, you know, for a Sunday morning vest. But why? Where did this whole idea come from of our Sunday morning vest? Is it more of a tradition of man, or is it the realization of a relationship with Jesus that we want to celebrate? You see, if I want to celebrate Jesus, I kind of feel more like it a little later on in the day. As a matter of fact, I kind of wrote a piece from Memoirs of a Jesus Gypsy that I talked about the early Jesus movement and how we used to just like really get into it on Sunday nights. You know, we really enjoyed like Sunday afternoons. But what I see nowadays is I'm even living in a city where people don't get together for church on Sunday night at all. Wow. Imagine that. They have three services in the morning, but they have nothing at night. Ooh. Of course... Maybe because there aren't too many Jews around. I don't know. It could be. Who knows? <laughs> don't dare to me say that. <laughs> who knows what may be going on in thoughts and minds of some of the people that have church. But I see a lot of phony baloney on a Sunday morning that I think that it's okay to be phony. But I think we need to address some things to realize that God sees who we are as we are, the way we are throughout the week, and that Sunday morning really isn't indicative of getting something for the week. Because if you're dressed up, and you're all put up, and kind of like shut up, and you're just kind of like getting together in order to get some, you know, hey, I didn't see George last week, you know, so maybe I'll see him this week, you know, or kind of I got to get some part of the message in for my weekly, love, you know, kind of like endurance record, you know, to get through to Wednesday, or God, I hope you go Wednesday. God wants us to meet every day. So, in my opinion, every day that I meet with the Lord ought to be the same way that I meet on Sunday. You know, kind of like six days thou shalt labor and the seventh day rest. Well, you know, you know, Sunday isn't really a Sabbath day rest, per se. It's more like a work day for me because I see most people worked up about getting up and getting ready and getting to church. 
I even see pastors doing the same thing when they get all worked up and wound up and they got to put their best foot forward on a Sunday morning and they don't look the same way come Sunday night or maybe come Monday morning. You know, that's kind of like, hmm, what are we doing with our lives that makes us feel comfortable going in the wrong direction rather than going in the right direction? Why can't we just let our hair down as a bad hair day and say, you know, this is the way, the truth, the life that Jesus lived. Foxes have holes, birds have their nests, and nowhere is the Son of Man to lay his head. If Jesus was wandering around city to city, I think he looked more like a vagabond than an actual planted inside of a synagogal church kind of movement, don't you? I mean, wouldn't it be kind of neat if we could just take the church outside to the street, you know, and kind of be street people, you know, maybe be country people, maybe, maybe be folk that just get together in order to share things and to deal with things instead of becoming, as you see often in many little fellowships from a home Bible study, they lose something when they become a church. They go from one stage where they say, hey, you know, we got a bunch of people together. This is kind of fun. You know, we get to know each other. You know, it's kind of like loose and free flowing. Then all of a sudden you get a building, you get a structure, you get bills, you get electrical bills, you get plumbing bills, you get water bills, you get all these bills. And then you got money, you know, you got to take money in and you got to plan out this thing and you got to get organized and you become more of a structured thing. You know what I mean? In other words, it's okay to have these things and it's okay to do these things. But are they dictating your relationship with God? Because the question would be, are you letting the church influence you? Or are you influencing the church? Because the church is reality of our relationship with God. It is a manifestation of who I am and who you are together in Jesus. If we go down the street together and we're arm in arm and we're like, you know, talking about the Lord and say, hey, bro, check it out, man. The Lord's been working on that house. The Lord's been doing something with that person's life. You know, that's. There's, there's some people that we don't know. Let's pray for them or let's go meet them, you know, and you're kind of like doing this arm in arm thing, you know, and you're walking down the street, you know, and you're talking and you're visiting about the Lord, you know, and you're going, man, you know, we ought to just take them a good, good news message, you know, and tell them that Jesus loves them, you know, just say, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. And it's just like being sent out to, you know, proclaiming freely you've received, freely give, go in my name, heal the sick, raise the dead. I kind of think that's what we should be doing on a Sunday morning. You know, instead of having our own church, go to church. In other words, go outside the walls to be about what the church should be doing about every day instead of just on a Sunday. I know a lot of people, you know, they, they say, well, you know, that's good for our evangelism Mondays or our, you know, terrible Tuesdays or our throwback Thursdays or whatever it may be, you know, or thank God it's Fridays. I think that if everybody's expecting to see church on Sunday, maybe we should be out about the church on Sunday. You know what I mean? I mean, if church is about sharing Jesus, maybe we should go out to share Jesus rather than come in to, quote unquote, box Jesus. Yeah, because I got news for you. It's kind of it's kind of interesting the way that, you know, you can put in a box just about everybody that walks in the door. And if you've ever been inside ministry, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you can see, well, you know, they don't come to church too often. You know, they do. And they do that every Sunday morning. People do that regularly. They get into this kind of shtick of, you know, little groups and little settings, you know, a little, little kind of like, oh, I don't know, you know, groupy thingies, you know, where they're grouping together. Well, that's my favorite seat. I sit on the left. You know, well, I sit on the right. Well, I, hey, George, how's it doing? You know, I haven't seen you since last Sunday. You know. Dare I say, what if Jesus walked in the door? Would he stay or would he go? I kind of think that Jesus himself wouldn't stay because whenever he was teaching, he taught and then he went out and he healed and he helped and he ministered to and he was that man of the people that the people felt like they could get to him. Wasn't he? What is it like with your church and what is it like with you? Can people approach you? Is the pastor approachable? Are you taking, you know, like a bunch of guys and saying, hey, 
you know, let's stop the service right now. Let's take this church outside. You know, let's just go with our guitars and unplug and go up and be plugged in to what the Spirit of God is doing. Let's go down the street maybe and visit somebody else's church. Maybe let's have church outside somebody's business or walk down this main street, just have a Jesus parade, you know, just spur the moment. You see, I know a man of God. He was a little flaky, you know, and he retired finally, you know. He wasn't the best when it came to maybe teaching the Word of God. He wasn't the strongest, you know, when it came to knowing the Word of God. But I'll tell you, when it came to living the Word of God, that man would take church right outside the street. He would get up from the middle of a service and he would take the whole congregation with him outside and just have a worship service. Imagine that. Imagine your pastor deciding, you know, guys, I love you all, but, you know, I think you've already heard all these messages before. And you've already, you know, kind of can get it on the Internet. Let's go outside and check out bringing your chairs with you. And let's go sit somewhere where we can share with other people. Because you all know the Word of God, right? Don't you? No, you don't. What are you doing during the week? I mean, come on now. It's not for me only to be teaching, but you guys are supposed to be learning, too. So let's all go together and let's go proclaim what Jesus said to do. You know, he sent them out as twos. Well, maybe you could take 10, you know, people or 12. Maybe you could be like the disciples, you know, and be the supportive network for a pastor to go out instead of staying in. Because I think that's what God wants us to do in these latter days. Oh, you've got your cathedrals, you know, your big mega churches, which is like, you know, pardon me, but have you ever seen what the upkeep is for that monies wise <laughs> wow yeah and have you ever seen what the success rate of an evangelism crusade is after a few years yeah wow have you ever seen how much money stays in america rather than goes outside of america in evangelism Ooh, being a wealthy christians that we are maybe we need to get outside of our comfort zone as lukewarm Christians and get back to the Jesus movement and the evangelism and the Pentecostal ideas that probably were manifested as part of our American history that were so powerfully moving in the day that we know that God was speaking directly to each and every one of us. I would say to you, what do you do with your church? Because you have church. You are, in fact, a pastor of your own church. You are a man, and if you're married, then you have a woman, and if you have children, then you have children, and you have a church. That's a church, church in the home. And so because you do, you manifest every day what your church is like. If your church is about Jesus, then you talk about Jesus. You talk about what he's done in your life. You talk about how he's leading your life. You talk about how he helped you in business in your life. Because I know a man right now that you know serves in a church that I, I pray for every day. Because God told him to lead a man's discipleship thing, and he's gone out of his way to get into business. And he's got more business opportunities than I can count, because it keeps him from being in the ministry. As a matter of fact, he couldn't serve in the ministry because his job was in the way. I find that interesting, because if you had a job that was in the way of your ministry, which would you choose? Serving your job or serving your ministry? Now, some people say, oh, well, my job comes first, then my ministry. Because after all, God wants me to provide for my family. Really? Does he? I mean, has God provided for the birds of the air? And so will he not provide for you also, oh, you little thing? I don't know what you think is the most important thing in your life, but I can tell you who is the most important person in mine, and that's Jesus. Because, you see, without Jesus, I could not get up in the morning. I would not survive my day. I would not be able to bring the word of God as I do and I teach and I pray. And as I say to you that I want to do something at the end of this that's going to blow your mind that probably will shake you from divine to, you know, ordinaire. I want to pray for your healing. I want to pray for some other things. But let's get clear about this. My relationship with Jesus might be different than yours, but I'm trying to share with you something about your relationship with Jesus about you and the church. You and the church should get together and have a real shaking. Oh, I don't mean like a shaking of the roof. I don't mean like a shaking of, you know, like rolling around and jumping up and down and acting like some kind of crazy person on the ground, you know, as though you were filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about shaking what can be shaken. 
Because if you've got some loose things going on, they're going to rattle, aren't they? They're going to make noises. You know a car, when it's got loose bolts, you know, it makes noise. Or if you've got, you know, a squeaky wheel, you know, you need to oil it. Well, I'm saying to you, in these latter days, with the time being so short, and so little time left for us to get our lives together, maybe it's time to risk being a fool for Jesus. Maybe it's time to get out of your comfort zone instead of being a religious Christianity, being a relationship type person who is willing to get up and go out and to do what Jesus said. Are you willing to this day, today, while you hear my voice, pray and ask God to send you right now, to send you right out the door, you know, to get up in front of your church, you know, and to say, hey guys, you know, the Lord's been talking to me. You know, maybe this is going to sound Pentecostal to you, but the Lord's been talking to me. Let's take us and go to, you know, this neighbor that I have that really could use some encouragement. Or one of our members in church right now is in the hospital. Let's stop the service and take it to them. Let's quit being about, oh, well, we'll send somebody, you know, eventually, you know, we, we can't stop the service because after all, you know, we don't want to mess up God's timing. I mean, this is where God meets, right? in the church or maybe you know like hey you know why don't we go down to the jail cell you know and i've heard that there's some street people you know or i've heard there's some homeless why don't we go have church there today right now let's go buy some food on the way you know and share with them just the love because you see you don't have to have a degree you don't have to have a pastor a preacher an electric guitar an outfit you know all these other things that the church has for religion but with your relationship with Jesus you can go forward just like Jesus said go and he kept saying to his disciples go 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 and they said no and sat in Jerusalem until they were kicked out then they went maybe that's what you need maybe your church is going to go through some kind of major catastrophe because you're going to find out God wants you to go not just to know in other words it's not enough to just know about God but you need to go with God so I'm going to pray for you right now, a couple of things. So you can just listen if you want to agree. If you don't agree, that's fine. Because this is our preach part of the Devo Church. We like to preach and tell you what to do. Because that's part of what preaching does. It tells you what you should do. Now, if you don't want to do it, fine. Don't. Go to hell. Go to heaven. Do what you want to do. But if the Spirit of God dwells within you, and He is convicting you and convincing you of that with which is being spoken to you, then you ought to do what it is the Lord tells you to do if it so be that you have a Lord instead of a Savior. And that's why we preach, because we preach Jesus as Lord of all. So, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are hearing my voice, first of all, if they are not saved, save them to the uttermost. God, have for them and give to them grace and mercy that they would be saved. So in the name of Jesus, if you are not saved, ask Jesus right now, Jesus, save me. And you are. Now that you're saved, I want to talk to you and tell you, go read your Bible. Go read Matthew and get from there and start learning about Jesus and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just get to know Jesus. That's all. Ask him, talk to him, walk with him, fellowship with him. Talk to him as though he were there because you may not know this, but he's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like, you know, you, sooner or later he's going to talk to you. And then, you know. You're on your own there, buddy. You know, once God starts talking to you, you better start doing what he says or you won't hear him again. So you're saved. Go to church if you want to. Learn a little bit. Learn your Bible. Begin to read. Begin to study. Begin to apply. But now that you're saved, I want to ask you to step aside for a minute because we're going to pray for those that are already saved. Because those that have been saved, you know, we want to talk to them about something they need to do that you need to first learn about Jesus first. You know, now, we're going to pray for you so you can listen and you can participate and you can go and do like we're praying for you to do. Receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are looking at me and that I'm connecting with, that they are hearing your voice, that they are talking to you and walking with you, that they have not received the spirit of man and the spirit of error, but they've received the spirit of truth. And they're walking with you and want more of you than they've ever had before in their life. Jesus, send the comforter now, what time is left, what little time is left, to overflow within them, knowledge and ability beyond their means, so that they could be a testimony and a witness to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now that you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and that you're filled with the Spirit of God, and you are, 
God promised it. It's not up to me or you to do. I mean, you can't work it up. You can't bring it up. You can't, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, I've got to, like, get in the right, you know. Hmm. You know, if I, if I say a couple of these, you know, and I do a couple of these, and I go, you know, and woo, woo, you know, and suddenly I'll be able to be babbling in the spirit of God. No, you're filled, period. That's it. Done. You want some gifts of spirit? Fine. Go for it. Ask him. you receive. That's it, period. That's how easy it is. Now, some of you that, you know, have issues, you may have issues of health. You may have issues of wealth or whatever, and I'm not going to deal with your wealth because, frankly, you're spoiled rotten. <laughs> no offense, sorry, but you are. You know, you're in America. You're spoiled. But now, because you may have health issues, I want to pray for you. I just want to pray for your healing. You know, that's perfectly simple. God, I pray that you, as the healer of us all, by your stripes you said you're healed, heal those in the name of Jesus that are hearing my voice. That right now, God, because they need to not focus in on their physical body, but they need to be led by your spirit. Heal them in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Bingo, you're healed. Now, you know, if you were here, I'd probably lay hands on you. And who knows, maybe I might take a jug of oil and just <laughs> drown you in it, you know, and you might feel wonderful then. <laughs> Hot oil treatment. <laughs> well, you know, works for some people. But the point is this. God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we are able to ask, that we can trust in him with all of our heart, meaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him and letting him direct our path, will heal you one way or another. I mean, to put it bluntly, I mean, I can cop out like most pastors do and say, hey, you know what, if you didn't get your healing, then you didn't have no faith. Well, that's not what it is. You know, I could cop out and say, well, you know, you're going to be healed because guess what? You know, when you die, you're healed. So guess what? And sooner or later, you're going to be healed of that body. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Go to heaven. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. You're healed. That's it. As much as God wants to do for you, he's done. That's it. Period. Accept it. If you're going through trials of your flesh, then you're going through trials. But God is healing you. God is always at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure. And because he's doing that, it's not a big stretch for me to say to you, hey, be healed. And to know that God is doing it. For you, it's a big stretch because you've never seen God heal. You've never seen God move, and you think that it has to be worked up in some kind of big evangelistic crusade. No, God does it. It doesn't have to do with getting your adrenaline rush up so that you, oh, I can receive it. I feel the chills. Hey, I feel chills every time I walk outside in the cold. You know what I mean? Pardon me, but, you know, that's not the way the Spirit of God works. The Spirit of God works and performs and does according to His will as He chooses. We just get to participate with him. We're just a vessel that he sometimes says, hey, you know what, I want you to say this to the people, and, you know, just pray for them and bless them, and well, and you bless them. And he says, well, you know, you know, they're not doing so good, so you curse their actions, and you curse their actions. And you don't curse the people, I mean, you may get in trouble there. But, you know, you may curse something that's going on, you know, or let God curse them, you know, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> that's the way I would do it. You know, if somebody told me to curse them, I'd say, well, the Lord reward you according to your fruit of your labor, because I'm not going to curse somebody. Give me a break. It'll come back on me. So, with healing, we know that God wants to bless you. We know that God wants to encourage you, not to bless you for money, and not to bless you with a job and all these other things, but to bless you in a way that you would turn towards him. And if that means that he wants you to suffer, he's going to let you suffer. Because the Christian life is about suffering. But I wanted to pray for you because I wanted you to know that. He's the one that heals you. He's the one that saves you. He's the one that fills you with the Holy Spirit. And it has nothing to do with your pastor. It has nothing to do with your faith. It has nothing to do with all of these things you try to instill upon you to try to feel like you got it. Got news for you. God did it. That's it. It's accomplished. So now that you're saved, now that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, now that you've been healed, and now that you've been empowered, would you go out and do something about it? Would you go out and tell people about Jesus? Would you please go and do what you read in the Word of God to do? Because Jesus says it pretty clearly, and he tells you what to do every day you read the Bible. Every day and in every way, and as much as you're willing to listen, God will speak to you today, and he will tell you, bluntly, where to go, what to do, and how to do it. The question will be, are you listening? Are you? 
Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. Today, as it is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm going to go out and tell people about Jesus all day long. Because that's what I do every day. I spend hours on the internet praying for people, counseling people, teaching people, instructing people, giving them tools, giving them ability, giving them, praying for them, doing all kinds of things that God says, I want you to do it. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to complain about it, I guess I better fix it. <laughs> so we do, God and I. We get together and we kind of like work on this thing. You know, it's like, okay, gosh, here's my part, here's your part. You do your part, I'll do my part. And that's how we work. And that's what God wants to do with you. He wants you to be with Jesus in his spirit, going forth by the word of God, to the people of God, by the spirit of God, of the Son of God. It kind of mixes that one up, and that's time on Video Church. But our motto, to put it bluntly, is the word of God, by the spirit of God, to the people of God, of the Son of God. Because if you are in the word of God, and you're asking God to lead you, then you're going to get all those things that he says. If you are, in fact, wanting Jesus, then you are saved, period. If you, in fact, wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. If you, in fact, wanted to be healed, you are healed. i got news for you. It's not about faith. Although faith helps because it helps you to realize the place where God is. And it helps you to understand how much God loves you. And it'll help you to appreciate how much God has done for you. But the reality of what God is means that God can do anything he wants to do, period. And that, with my faith, I know, guess what? <laughs> Receive faith if you need it, buddy, you've got to get a grip on what you call God. Because I know the living God. Maybe you don't. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't block your ears and don't stop what God wants you to hear and what God wants you to do today. Because it's time for you to get up, get out, and get on the way of doing what Jesus would say to you. Go and preach and teach and make disciples of all nations. And don't just sit in a pew. Pew. pew -ee. That's what's what a pew is for. Don't just sit in a church. Oh my God, you know, you become lukewarm sitting there. Get up and get out and get on with it. And get real with God. Because if you're not, hey, you're just playing actors and actresses and this whole performance that I don't know if God even pays attention to Sunday morning. Because sometimes I think there's more of this feel-good club on a Sunday morning than there is of the reality of a do-good club, what Sunday morning should be all about. Do good, not feel good. Not bless me, but let me bless others. To go forth and to encourage those that are about to perish. So dare I say, think about that. Get outside your box of Sunday morning, and maybe God has something in store for you down the street you never dreamed of, but you just thought this was the way we always do it, so we're always doing it. No, I don't think so. And I think you may find when you read about Jesus and you follow him, you're going to go out and even do things you never dreamed or imagined that God would do with you today as you hear his voice, as you walk in his word, as you follow his way, not your own.